welcome to PC Woods Kids Tech Talk. Today I'm going to be showing you guys the PNY Accelerate GTX 580 liquid cooled graphics card. Now I've got two of these here. One of them has CPU cooling and the other one is just GPU cooling. But they both use the Asetek liquid cooled technique. Now as you can see here though, okay, for these two cards, they're going to have the exact same specs okay and it comes pre overclocked which is great so Asetek has provided the cooling in there it has all the latest technologies and support it comes pre overclocked from the defaults to an amazing 857 megahertz on the core clock as you can see there now we're gonna try to keep the temperatures below the maximum of course with this closed loop circuit that it comes with already prepared and ready to go all you do is just install it you don't have to worry about the cables you don't have to worry about the liquid it's always running it's steady it's steady in there and um, as you can see from the card here it's using the reference design from Nvidia and it's um, obviously a double slot wide card it's about 10.5 inches in length roughly okay on this card and uh, the other thing you want to keep in mind is when you gently take this out the cables okay the tubes already come attached so you know just be careful with that everything's ready to go and the radiator at the back because again you can hook this up in SLI but uh, you want to keep in mind that there's a lot of cables a lot of uh, tubes going around here so you gotta handle with care everything double double sided the uh, radiator so you can install two fans for the CPU cooled version it comes with two fans, two 120 millimeter fans that you will install on either side for a push pull effect. If you get the other kit that is only the GPU cooled liquid cooled version it only has one fan and it's half the size the radiator. Now here's a look at the um, CPU cooler from Acetec with the PNY logo stamp on it. It has the uh, thermal grease and the copper um, base there ready to go and the tubes and everything are attached. You've got the uh, pump power and a fan cable as well, of course. So everything is um, uh, self-explanatory in the manual there for you to install this. And you can see there, um, it's pretty much standard the look and feel of that. Eight pin power connector, by the way, and a six pin. So you need that. I would say a 600 watt power supply is enough for one of these cards. If you're gonna install two of them in SLI, you need an 850 watt power supply minimum. So here's a view of the GPU cooling kit without the CPU cooling you can see it's half the size okay it, lo it looks identical almost in the closed loop the way it installs you put the fan on there so it blows air out of the case okay and uh, in the box okay there's very similar uh, CDs obviously for, for the installation that's basically the same but the CPU cooling kit comes with a bracket so you can install it on an AMD or an Intel system obviously so that would be the uh, main difference if you were to you know look through what comes in the box uh, other than that they both come with this little bag here that has the VGA to uh, DVI out connector it has a mini HDMI to regular HDMI connector which is this black one right here and um, it also comes with a Molex to 6-pin power connector and the quick start manual. Okay, there's the uh, Molex to 6-pin in case you have an older power supply. And on the um, fan side, just so you guys see what the fans look like, if you get the CPU and GPU liquid-cooled kit, you get two fans. If you get the GPU-only liquid-cooled kit, you get one fan. And, uh, but the fans are identical with the three pin power connector and the PNY logo on the other side, as you can see, 120 millimeter fan, okay? And uh, that's really about it. Here's my test system, by the way, from um, if you guys are, are familiar with my last contest, this is basically a list of the parts that uh, I have in there, okay? And uh, when I had it up and running in Windows 7, very interesting enough, at 4.5 to 4.7 gigahertz, I had temperatures actually pretty low. So I'd say that uh, with liquid cooling, it was about 5 degrees Celsius less than um, what I had before with uh, air. And in GPU-Z here in Windows 7, you can see the stats on this 2010 card. It is an older technology, but it's still using 40 nanometer architecture. And it's still top of the line when it comes to speed. The bus width at 30 
uh, sorry, 384 bit gives a lot of um, uh, bandwidth when it comes to moving data back and forth. So you can run games at full speed, high and uh, settings. And you can see here the GPU memory and the shader uh, clock speeds that I mentioned earlier. I'm having both of these in SLI set up and um, there's no need to overclock this any further. It's already pre-overclocked, so we're going to leave it at that for all the benchmarks. Terrific cards. When it comes liquid cooled, we're looking at roughly 39 degrees to 36 degrees Celsius on idle. And at full load, it was about 53 to 54 degrees Celsius. Not bad at all. So I went into the NVIDIA control center, set these uh, two cards up at the defaults to uh, be an SLI and left that on auto there so it can select um, the physics settings and you can see here that I have one monitor connected to the HDMI out on it and doing some benchmarks. In 3 d Mark Vantage you can see the GPU score is 43,806 which is essentially mind-boggling and massive. Okay, so any game you throw at this thing um, nothing can touch it basically when you have two cards in SLI which is what I had done here okay both cards in SLI give me that score 3d mark uh, 11 you can see here the scores again out of this world really high I mean I don't think there's hardly anything that can touch it unless you install three or four of these cards obviously in SLI um, when it came to Cinebench though I was really surprised to see that my crossfire setup on the 6950s beat um, the GTX 580s in, um, in SLI on that rendering test so um, pretty interesting there however on Haven benchmarks for the tessellation and DirectX 11 nothing could touch that nothing could beat that no matter what setup I had um, this is basically the most you'll ever get when it comes to an SLI uh, setup okay it was really really high frames per second extra super smooth here are some examples on some games such as Fear 3 as you can see here I'm running this on maxed out settings of course everything maxed out because there's no need to run it on low and um, super smooth super high settings again on these resolutions which is all I really need when I play a game I just play them on these resolutions on uh, 1080, 1080p basically and uh, Crisis 2 again you can see here awesome frames per second on uh, 1080p and um, also I tried this game on Alien vs Predator the average um, frames per second were amazing as you can see there and uh, lastly I also tried this game on um, Dragon Age 2 and again terrific benchmarks there the minimum and the average were really really high again maxed out settings uh, there's just the, no doubt about it that this card gave uh, terrific results even on Lost Planet 2 you can see the benchmark result there of a rank of S for super because I mean there's nothing that can touch this sh but anyways 158 uh, on average frames per second on that so what can I say other than this thing is just awesome whether you get the liquid cooled version with the CPU cooler or the liquid cooled version with just the GPU cooler PNY has done a terrific job teaming up with Ashitek to get this uh, closed circuit kit ready to go for you for enthusiasts and hardcore gamers that want top-notch performance and I definitely recommend this if you're looking for the high-end stuff and I'd like to thank PNY for providing it and I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for watching